Fellow Namibians, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for the Bank of Namibia Stakeholder Seminar on mapping Namibia's post-COVID economic recovery. Let me at the outset thank the speakers and all invitees for honoring our invitation despite the busy schedules, which attest to the importance you attach to what I believe is a timely seminar. I'm glad to note that in our midst we have a wide variety of stakeholders from across many important sectors. After the panel discussion, I would really love the director of ceremonies to provide an opportunity to those in the room to leverage the collective wisdom of the room. If there's anyone with an idea about how we can grow this economy, today is your opportunity to do exactly that. As we grow to find ways to economic recovery post COVID-19, the theme for this seminar is both timely and relevant. Firstly, it allows us to interrogate how best and how far we have implemented micro and macroeconomic policy interventions to address the challenges imposed by COVID-19 pandemic on our economy. Secondly, it also allows us to shape the post-COVID-19 economic environment with appropriate policy interventions to usher in a period of recovery and long-term growth. COVID-19 continues to have far-reaching effects on people's lives in solving our challenges as long ended. Apportioning blame is neither helpful nor will armchair criticism without offering practical solutions contribute to improving the quality of lives of the millions. The time has come to pinpoint the source of uncertainty, to pinpoint bottlenecks to growth and getting rid of them and galvanizing the level of economic activity to restore growth through complementary policy interventions. In this regard, we have a collective responsibility regardless of the sectors we may find ourselves in. Many people are asking, what has the Bank of Namibia done so far to help restore economic recovery? Director of Service, ladies and gentlemen, allow me at this point to briefly narrate the COVID-19 story and touch on some policy measures put in place to address the impact of COVID-19 in Namibia. Almost two years ago, in March 2020, to be exact, Namibia recorded its index case of COVID-19 and on 17 March 2020, a state of emergency was declared. A travel ban was imposed, stopping all international flights in and out of Namibia. While these measures were expected to reduce the direct health impact of COVID-19, contained the geographical spread of the virus and allowed time for healthcare facilities to be ready. They were, however, also anticipated to have a significant impact on various sectors of the economy, such as tourism, hospitality, entertainment, as social distance measures were enforced. The economy was already weak prior to the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic and therefore the Bank of Namibia had to act very quickly. Against this background, the Monetary Policy Committee of the NPC of the Bank of Namibia reduced the repo rate in March and April 2020. Firstly, on the 20th of March 2020, the NPC held a special meeting and reduced the repo rate by 100 basis points to 5.25%. This was followed by a further reduction of 100 basis points at the subsequent MPC meeting on 15 April 2020, with the repo rate reaching 4.25%. Moreover, two more rate cuts of 25 basis points each were announced at the June and August 2020 MPC meetings, respectively. As a result, the repo rate reached a new historic low of 3.75% in August 2020. Given Namibia's membership of the Common Monetary Area 
and the one-to-one -one currency pay, the Bank of Namibia's monetary policy stance is usually broadly aligned with that of the South African Reserve Bank. During the course of 2021, the policy environment changed significantly with inflation rising ominously. The South African Reserve Bank increased its policy interest rate in November 2021, but the Bank of Namibia, despite the possible <coughs> possibility of capital flight, felt that it was too early to raise interest rates as the economy was still struggling to recover and the initial position since August 2020 was one of a marginally higher repo rate in Namibia than in South Africa. This meant that Namibia's repo rate was maintained at 3.75% while that of South Africa was raised from 3.5% to 3.75% last November. However, in January this year, the South African Reserve Bank further increased the repo rate again of 25 basis points to 4%. This, for all intents and purposes, had forced our hand to increase the repo rate to 4% at the first MPC meeting of 2020. So the realities of the current track on being in a monetary currency area is not something we cannot just ignore. We need to defend the pack. Many people were saying, but you guys at the MPC, if you look at a subdued group, if you look at the unemployment challenge that we have got in the country, if you look at credit extension that's relatively weak and low, and you guys come and increase the repo rate by 25 basis points, those are valid questions. I hope you can go beyond that and also start asking every economist in the room who talk to you about the impossible trinity or the trilateral challenge that we have got. You cannot have in a monetary current area, area where we have packed our currency, try and run a totally independent monetary policy. That, that's not possible. So we have looked at the challenges we are facing in the nation, but we also needed to defend the pay arrangement that we had. So this was dictated by the need to maintain the pay and curb further capital flight despite the slow economic recovery. Year to day, because of that 25 basis points differential that we had got, we had an outflow, a net outflow of more than seven billion Namibian dollars. So if we have not done anything, we could have seen quite a lot of capital chasing higher returns. It's nothing to do with our country. It's capital money follows where it's welcome and where it's getting the best returns and where the environment is predictable and the environment is stable. So what is worrying for the central bank and for us is that despite the generally accommodative monetary policy environment, even with the recent, recent increase by historical standards, new credit extension uptake and activity remain invariably subdued. It's very low, we are concerned about that. The Bank of Namibia's response to COVID-19 has assisted Namibia's economic restart and recovery. The economic impact of COVID-19 pandemic created Various challenges for borrowers and consequently for banking institutions. In addition, the COVID 19 pandemic emerged at a time when Namibia was already facing an economic downturn as aforementioned. Against this backdrop, the Bank of Namibia issued the determination and policy changes in response to economic and financial stability challenges following the fallout of COVID-19 pandemic, so we issued Verb 33. The determination Verb 33 makes provision for banking institutions to grant capital payment moratorium where a holiday is allowed on the principal amount for a period ranging from six months up to a period but not exceeding 24 months, two years. In order not to withdraw these measures prematurely, a revision of Verb 33 was done in October 2021 and we have decided to extend this further to April 2023. 
Our other relief measures were granted on the capital conservation buffer, changes in the law exposure limits and the liquidity management limits for time bands of 0 to 7 days and 8 to 31 days that were reintroduced. The bank also agreed to amend the determination and asset classification and provisioning to lengthen the duration of period or period before loan should be written off. The holistic revisions include an amendment to the effective date, clarification of burden sharing, treatment of write offs, including collateral haircuts in the Bird 33 amendments, re institution of liquidity management limits, and reporting guidance and provisions reporting. The bank also supported other initiatives to ease credit conditions. These included the extension of the maximum period over which installment of say credit and motor vehicles can be repaid. This was raised from 54 to 72 months. Furthermore, the maximum loan to value ratio on mortgage loans for the acquisition of secondary residential properties was also raised. This made it possible to purchase additional properties using a home loan. Furthermore, what we have done is, together with, with the Ministry of Finance, we provided a $500 million Namibia dollar guarantee towards the SME COVID-19 loan scheme. The take-up is very low, despite the financial distress that we had got. So it's probably reflective of the economic activity. We probably have got a situation where the capacity utilization is low, the demand is almost non-existent, and there's probably no point in getting additional credit to, to run your businesses because demand is very subdued. Despite the amendments made to Bed 33 and low interest rates, growth in credit extended to the private sector was slower in 2021 compared to 2020 due to lower demand, mainly because of the system subject to domestic economic activity. As I stated earlier, notwithstanding the lower interest rates on an annual basis, growth in PCE moderated to an average annual rate of 2.5% in 2021 from an annual average of 3.5% recorded during 2020. Low interest rates and special relief measures can only go so far and save some businesses that were already reeling from the contractions of the pre-COVID year, thereafter amplified by the COVID-related disruption, could not be rescued. Reflecting the economic difficult conditions, the number of forming loans in most of the banks increased relentlessly up to the third quarter of 2021, when it reached 6.9% of the loan book. Fortunately, in the fourth quarter of 2021, the non-performing loans ratio receded slightly, which may be an early sign the worst fallout of the pandemic is behind us. Ladies and gentlemen, monetary policy alone is not enough. Though monetary policy has provided substantial support to the economy, the pace of recovery will depend on factors outside the bank's control, such as improved sovereign debt sustainability, structural reforms, and the implementation of an accelerated growth and recovery strategy, as well as strong private sector, domestic, and foreign investment, and risk taking. To place the Namibian economy on a sound and sustainable growth path, the Bank of Namibia stays ready to provide support to the economy ostensibly within the scope of its mandate. Price and financial stability are important for maintaining purchasing power, containing the cost of living and doing business, and supporting Namibia's competitiveness while creating certainty and confidence. Nevertheless, improving the potential growth rate of the economy should be a collective effort from both the public and the private sector. Monetary stimulus alone cannot engineer healthy, durable growth. A broad and encompassing policy response is critical to ensure that we do not overly rely 
on individual measures that could lead to unintended consequences when kept in place for too long. The post-COVID economic recovery faces a number of significant hurdles. Apart from the need to address electricity and digital infrastructure, urgent attention has to be given to creating policy certainty, ensuring professional service delivery and diligent execution of policy, and addressing accountability issues. All of this must be accomplished while the fiscal situation is very tight. Namibia really has to do more with less. The potential to overcome supply side constraints, improve productivity, potential growth and job creation can be unlocked through private sector-led activities. To this end, impetus must be given to the implementation of the various recommendations and objectives on the mentor. We need to demonstrate strong leadership entailing a board assessments on how to improve efficiency and ensure value for money of all institutions without exception. The post-COVID economic recovery has several positives lined up to bolster and start out of the blocks. All is not doom and gloom. The Green Hydrogen Initiative is progressing significantly. Our core infrastructure has already been upgraded so that a virtual doubling of traffic can be handled. The recent qualifying of the sea is still a conceptual exciting. A number of mining and manufacturing projects are underway or in the pipeline. In the past three years, the mining sector also invested 14.1 billion Namibian dollars, or 7.2 percent of gross domestic product. The cumulative investments, that's the sum of investments in the past three years, and ongoing investments by the mining sector in the economy is estimated at 20.6 billion Namibian dollars. Work of investments equivalent to 10.5% of the 2022 gross domestic product. Furthermore, research work in collaboration with the Harvard Growth Lab on diversifying the economy to raise our growth is progressing well. Specific sectors have been identified in linkage proposed with markets. So what we're trying to do was really to reduce the reliance on external demand for commodities. How do we diversify our economy? It was this end brought in the Harvard Growth Lab. We looked at some competitive advantages we have got already. What are the adjacent industries? If you are involved in mining, for instance, we import quite a lot of chemicals. Is that one the adjacent industry that we need to look at, like chemicals, and create a chemicals industry in the country? Because all the mines are importing sulfur, whatever chemicals they need. So what they have done is a really interesting piece of work. We've identified some adjacent industries that can be developed in the country. A selection has been made. Potential markets for those industries that have been identified and proposed, and now it's really taking this to the next level. The tourism sector stands ready to capitalize on further lifting of pandemic related restrictions and normalization of visitor numbers. And in the meantime, the national spirit has been lifted by the widespread race that have fallen across the media, transforming many thrones into smiles and bringing the promise of higher production in this very decentralized sector that employs 170,000 Namibians. So how will we see economic recovery and growth in a post-pandemic Namibia? Well, the first thing I might say is that we are not finished with the pandemic just yet. And it's our way to be asked to volunteer some thoughts beyond monetary and financial stability on Namibia's post-COVID recovery, I would probably suggest the first thing we need to do is to contain this pandemic, that we don't get others 
restrictions again, or lockdowns. But if you ask me, what should we do in the short to medium term, I'd probably say improving domestic resource mobilization and specifically tax compliance, better coordination of government policies and programs, and elimination of fragmentation and inefficiencies. Private sector investments in high levels absor absorbed sectors such as agriculture, promoting and attracting foreign direct investment through incentives in exchange for jobs and export earnings, reforming, strengthening and optimizing our SOEs, especially the commercial ones. That is need to demonstrate in the most practical way government efforts to move towards an arrangement where we can enhance the efficiencies of our state-owned enterprises. Structural reforms to enable growth, and this includes leveraging our assets and developing self-sustaining economies, municipalities, towns, and village councils. We are so dependent on what's happening, and I'm wondering whether the time has not come so for self-sustaining economies in our municipalities, in our towns, local councils. I was quite impressed to see one of the boroughs in London. You know, they have challenge of housing, and the borough has decided we are going to go and raise our own money to get involved in provisioning of housing. I don't say we should. That's just an example of how we need to think differently about creating some innovations in the way we are running our councils, our municipalities. Energy transition from fossil to renewable laws. Technological progress and know-how agglomeration are fundamental to the process of structural transformation that characterizes economic development. And what we should do is to remove rigidities, promote competition and inclusion. These are some of my thoughts on how we can jumpstart the economy. But obviously, this is what the seminar is meant for. And further thoughts and policy recommendations will come from this platform. We have speakers, We've got panel discussion, and we've got a room full of opinions from various sectors that can contribute to us how we can really restore economic growth. Finally, Desmond Tutu stated in a quote, it may appear daunting, but I'm a prisoner of hope. We are more connected than ever before. We have more knowledge, and if we work together, there are solutions. Close quote. This, ladies and gentlemen, is our charge. And if this is the case, collective action and unity of purpose, because we are only as good as the community or economy in which we live. With that, I thank you for your attention.